How's it going star seekers? Welcome back to the channel, where in today's review we're going to be taking a look at Iris and the Giant, a game which blends strategic collectible card based combat with RPG and roguelike gameplay elements. As you follow the journey of Iris, a young girl who troubled by her insecurities and unable even to speak to her father about her feelings, instead withdraws into her own imaginary world where she faces a battle against her inner demons on a journey to face the great sorrowful giant within her. The game has been out on Steam since February and has just been ported to the Switch, so let's dive into this review and take a look at what the game has to offer. So Iris and the Giant opens with Iris travelling across the river Styx, which in Greek mythology forms a boundary between the Earth and the Underworld, or in this case, reality and imagination and the Greek mythology theme extends to the game's visuals and the enemies that you encounter. After disembarking from the ferryman's boat, Iris finds herself at the bottom floor of a tower-like structure and the beginning of a journey to face the giant at its summit. Now gameplay in Iris and the Giant sees you ascending through the floors facing waves of increasingly more challenging enemies. Each floor's enemies are randomly selected, presenting themselves in rows either 2, 3 or 4 units wide and each enemy has its own way of attacking and dealing damage to Iris's willpower, indicated by a red circle in the bottom left. If a willpower reaches zero, then the run is over, but you're awarded a set of cards and perks to begin your next run with to help you out. Now the enemies that you face to begin with are relatively simple, with things like skeletons only able to attack you from the front row, or cat-like archers able to attack from any distance, each only dealing a single point of damage to Iris but Iris is able to fight back using cards seen along the bottom of the screen. The game's combat sees both Iris and enemies taking turns to attack, and at the start of a turn, Iris draws cards at random from those contained within a yellow bag seen beside a health bar, and running out of cards also ends the run. There are a total of 60 cards in the game, and like enemies, their abilities start simple, such as swords and bows which damage single enemies, axes which attack all enemies in the front row, or fire spells which attack all enemies in a straight line. There are also defensive cards including shields which protect Iris from damage for a number of turns, or confidence cards which restore all of her willpower. Now each time an enemy is defeated, those behind it move forward to fill the missing spaces, and the objective of each floor is to reach the stairway leading to the next floor, which can be ascended regardless of whether all enemies have been defeated or not. However, defeating enemies earns your stars, and after gaining a specific amount, you're then able to select from a number of different traits, including ones which increase your maximum willpower, the number of cards you're able to draw, or the number of round shields protect you for. Now, the developers have done a great job of ensuring Iris and the Giant's difficulty increases at a steady rate and doesn't just spike. As you work your way up through the floors, you encounter a wide variety of opponents, each presenting their own unique challenges with the actions that they perform. Examples of these include fire demons, which ignite your cards, causing them to damage you when played, snakes, which permanently reduce your maximum willpower with their attacks, thieves, who steal the cards from your pouch, and mice, who make the enemies around them immune to damage, or grant armour to their allies, which must then be broken before they can be defeated. Some floors also contain more powerful elite versions of enemies and unique bosses, who drop stars when defeated, rewarding you with magical powers, improving various card abilities. Now as enemy power and variety increases, so does your selection of cards, which opens up a ton of new strategical options for defeating enemies. You have things like whip cards, which manipulate the position of objects and enemies, bombs which damage enemies in a cross shape, lightning bolt cards which damage all on-screen enemies of a specific type, and scythe cards which can be used to steal even more powerful cards from enemies or unique cards from bosses. On the whole, I found there to be a huge amount of strategy to the game's turn-based combat system, but that's only one element which forms part of Iris and the Giant's gameplay mechanics, and there are a number of different other things that you can find in levels which also provide even more variety. For example, on each floor you can find gems and golden chests which allow you to gain additional cards when collected or opened, secret stairways leading to alternate routes through the game, or hidden portals which lead to a series of challenges requiring you to defeat a group of enemies with a specific set of cards. 
Now turning back to the game's storyline which forms an important part of the game, throughout your runs you'll also be able to find golden memory fragments which provide snippets of Iris' backstory and the reasons behind her suffering. Collecting these will also allow you to allocate points to unlock nodes in a kind of skill tree, which provides a bunch of different powerful bonuses such as additional cards in chests or second chances when failing levels. There are also imaginary friends which can accompany Iris on a journey, providing extra bonuses, which are unlocked by completing specific challenges. Now I personally thought that Iris and the Giant had some extremely well thought out and enjoyable gameplay mechanics, and in total I spent over 25 hours playing whilst capturing footage for this review, and that was just in the first game mode alone. After completing the game you unlock Nightmare Mode in which the more challenging enemies appear right from the first floor, and you also unlock two other game modes. Firstly you have Path of the Ferryman which features a ton of new enemy types and sees Iris venturing down to face the Ferryman, and secondly you have Challenge of Cronus, where you have to complete floors as fast as possible to add additional seconds to the timer ticking down in the top left corner of the screen. This adds a whole new challenging gameplay element as if the timer reaches zero the game also ends. Now when it comes to the game's visuals the devs have gone for a minimalistic art style which I really liked. Cleverly, each enemy had a unique appearance, enabling you to identify them by the silhouette alone, which allowed you to plan ahead for when they appeared on the board. The game's sound effects were also kept simple and worked really well, and the game's music was used to great effect to portray changes in Iris' emotional states the further into a run you got. Now I will mention that I encountered a couple of bugs with the game, one which froze gameplay, and another strange one which... Well, I can't explain what's happening, but just look. But both of these bugs were remedied by restarting the game, after which you can continue from the floor that you were on. So in all, I really did have a great time playing Iris and the Giant. Its gameplay was engaging, and it was one of the most enjoyable card-based roguelike games I've played in a long time. If you're a fan of games like Slay the Spire, I highly recommend checking out this game. So now we come to rating Iris and the Giant. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a shovel worst stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on the quality and quantity of a title's gameplay, and whether or not I feel it offers value for money to potential buyers. For a rating, I'd give Iris and the Giant 4 out of 5 stars. There's some great depth to Iris and the Giant's gameplay mechanics, a huge amount of replayability with its enemy variety and multiple game modes, and an emotionally provoking backstory which really makes you want to seek out every memory fragment to see the game through to its final conclusion. You can pick up Iris and the Giant from the UK Switch eShop for £13.49, or from the US eShop for $14.99. Alternatively, the game's also available on Steam. And so that's it for this review of Iris and the Giant. Don't forget to hit that like button if it helped you out, and leave a comment down below with your thoughts and opinions on the game and this review. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Nintendo Switch reviews and content, and jump onto the Star Seekers Discord server to become part of its growing community. For now though, I just want to say thanks once again for watching, and until next time, take care, and game on.